Hi, I'm Fox. I'm Raggable. <laughs> and I'm, I guess, Couch Guy. <laughs> and you're watching the Two Smart Guys show, where every week we bring you the coolest, latest, greatest hacks for your little electronic devices. And we do it real simple like, you know, we show you step by step. These are tutorials for noobs or hacker enthusiasts that just like to hear us ramble or something. Hence the 101. <laughs> well, no, we don't have a 101 anymore, do we? Well, we could say this is Apple TV hacking 101 episode 4, but Couch Guy put a next Everything to that. had a 101. You have to like 400 different 101 noob approach. Yeah, it's you, you just build your brand around one thing. It's two smart guys, yeah, I know, I know, I and know, we're I know, awesome. I know, I know. <laughs> anyways, anyways, today we are covering hacking the the brand new Apple TV. This little guy, this little box right here. Yay! <laughs> so Apple decided not to go with a mini computer like the first Apple TV, which was essentially a, a, a Mac Mini, like a little mini. And they went with basically an iPad without the screen. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, an A4 chipset, and it's running uh, an embedded iOS. So it's essentially, like you said, yeah. So, I mean, all the efforts uh, put forward to jailbreak uh, iPhones and iPods is now that effort just kind of splashed over to the new Apple TV. I'm assuming that because they made their own chip that we're going to see a lot more of these uh, chips and everything Apple. Oh yeah, probably. probably. Anyways, um, there's no apps by default on the Apple TV, but the hackers are foam foaming at the mouth wanting to start porting stuff over. Yeah, well, that's, that it's jailbroken. There's, there's some hurdles there considering um, uh, user interaction scenarios. Uh, the apps, jailbroken apps developed for the iPhone and the iPad are, are all centered around that touch interface, but now all of a sudden on the Apple TV, the only interface that they really have is the IR remote and um, possibly through USB um, keyboard and mice. And so there's that hurdle to overcome. <laughs> I see an awesome Wii remote hack. Well, there's AirPlay. So with AirPlay, you can control the Apple TV through your iPad or your iPhones or your iPods. So there might be something cool there. But just, but just what you're playing though. So I mean that I mean that's just yeah. one hurdle that they have to overcome is like I said, user interaction, and then um, just like what jailbroken apps did for the original iPhone, um, developers I foresee will start to use the device in ways that Apple didn't intend, and Apple will take notice of it and just slowly uh, update the Apple TV with all these changes, and so it'd be interesting to see how it how this thing develops and how Apple responds to that with future releases of iOS for the Apple TV. So you're saying that Apple's now going to start saving money on beta testing by letting people hack their devices. I like that. Well, I mean, if you think about the apps developed for the original iPhone, um, like all the camera apps like uh, Sidequarter and um, uh, Skype and all those things, Apple slowly but surely started to incorporate it into their devices with yeah. certain iterations. So I mean, I'm just guessing that whatever people come out with, Apple will take notice of and will make them acknowledge that people are using this device in that way so they respond accordingly. So if you, if you jailbreak it today, there's still some things that you can do. You can do uh, SSH and you can look at the file system. <laughs> Yeah, so basically you can get in through SSH, you can poke around in the file structure, you can poke around in that version of iOS for the Apple TV. I don't know if they've forked it yet, if it's a straight rip from the iPad, um, but there's obviously uh, things specific, specific for the Apple TV, such as the IR remote. Uh, there's probably kernel extensions for the infrared sensor and libraries that handle uh, the key presses from the remote. So. Just people will be All looking right. at it right now. Forensics. So let's get into the tutorial on how to do this thing. All right. Yeah, let's get into it. All right. Real simple. You need to download the IPSW file and the Pwnage tool, the newest one that jailbreaks the Apple TV using 
um, lime, the lime rain exploit. You run the pwnage tool, you pick the IPSW, and then you need to put the Apple TV into DFU mode, which is a little bit new. <laughs> what you do is you have it plugged in, and you and then you also plug in uh, a micro USB. And this is like what the they use to charge Blackberries and stuff. They're not the mini USB, micro USB. And then you unplug the power while it's plugged in through the micro USB, and you hold down menu and play for seven seconds, and then you let go. And then I'll put it in DFU mode, and then you can hold down uh, Alt and pick the IPSW file that was made by the Pwnage tool, and it'll restore, and then you will have a jailbroken Apple TV. So it's that simple. And that's all she wrote? Yeah. So once once it's jailbroken and you have access to these little files, are are you able just to see the innards, everything, or are you just able you to see? You can see everything. You get root access to it, so you could do whatever you want with it. You could totally mess it up. <laughs> you have access to every um, single terminal or um, uh, shell level command, um, the base level iOS uh, FreeBSD stuff, and so. Yeah, like Pac said, you could foobar it with rm dash r uppercase f forward slash. So, some of the simple things that services that could be ported over real easily, like NetATalk or um, like I don't know if there's a, there's probably already an Apache server, FTP server, things like that. Yeah, that those will be the, some of the first things to show up. But I mean that those are essentially at this point in time a little. Um, useless as there's no internal storage but um as far as eight web, gigs like, there's eight like gigs a, of storage a web server that could be configured and then somebody could develop um uh, some configuration web uis for the apple tv for some back-end services much like uh, other embedded devices have web uis like free nas that's true yes yeah, we was telling me it has eight gigs of internal storage so it does have some Oh, it does have eight gigs of internal storage. Now, are they are they separately like is one like a firmware and one's just storage or um, inside of the Pwnage tool you can select the area is that's for storage. It's just like the iPhone; they allocate like uh, eight hundred megs or so, or five hundred megs for the the OS, and then the rest of it's available for applications and uh, media. Cool. Yeah, because I just wonder, because I, I don't know how much of a difference it makes, but it's, uh, you know, if you play with config files, and if it's not, you know, you can actually save them back and not have to go through flashing firmware every time you want to do something like that. So it'll be interesting to see, because like with the boxy box, they said they're going to they're gonna let people hack it. They're going to leave it wide open, <laughs> so you can do whatever you want with this $200 boxy box. It does 1080p. Now you're gonna be, we're going to be struggling with this to see what kind of cool hacks they come up with for this $100 box that does 720p. But of course, this is probably going to be adopted more because it's cheaper and it's Apple. But we'll see, and we'll keep everybody updated. Um, we'll do more updates as there are more cool. As something interesting pops up and useful. Yes. Just check us out at twosmartguys.com. <laughs> New shows every week. See you guys next week. Bye. This has been a Two Smart Guys production. 